So I'm Andre, and I'm going to talk about Utra Caps. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. I've been working for JetBrains for quite a while. Here I am responsible for uh, many front-end related things, such as open source, uh, UI components, library code, ring UI, our authentication service hub, and my main workload, our project management software Utra. The last major project I worked on was Utrecht Apps, which I will be presenting today. So, the plan. I'm going to take 15 minutes and I'll cover these topics. What is Utrecht? What is Utrecht App? How or what makes Utrecht Apps tick? How to make your own Utrecht App? And how Utrecht Apps communicate with JetBrains Marketplace? You might ask, what this Utrecht thing is. So let me quickly introduce it. Utrek is a cloud or on-premise project management and issue tracking tool. It's very flexible, configurable, and customizable. It has deep integration capabilities and it can be used by teams of under 10 users for free. It's a very cool project and also a great project for me to work on. We receive tons of user requests and we often see that every company has something unique that doesn't make much sense for other users. At that point of customization, it makes more sense to give power to the people, power to customer to cover cases that we just can't. So what is Utrek app? Before diving into technical details, I'd like to show you a one minute video that will give you an overview of Utrek apps. Let's take a look. Utrack lets you create and use apps. Apps add even more flexibility to adapt Utrack to every team and team member. Use apps to extend the functionality of Utrack by adding new features, tools, and integrations that aren't available out of the box. Or even fill Utrack with cat photos if you like. An app can show info from external systems, modify Utrack project and task views, create forms or extra pages, implement complex automations, or integrate with your favorite tools. Explore the growing apps marketplace, create your own app or ask your consulting partner to create one for you, and customize Utrack to work exactly how you need it to. Utrack, customizing your own unique workspace is easier than you think. That was a great overview of Utrack apps. Now let's dive deeper into the details. For end users, a Utrek app appears as a piece of Utrek user interface that is dedicated to solving a specific task. For example, here we can see the article feedback app that allows Utrek knowledge base maintainers to receive feedback and improve the quality of their articles. We can also see a simple integration with Slack, so users in Utrek are now linked to their Slack accounts. That was the end user perspective. And now let's take a look under the hood where the programming stuff is happening. Technically, a Utrecht app is an archive with this file structure. We'll get to these files later, but what I'd like you to understand now is that an app is nothing but a simple set of files. These files, when installed into Utrecht, can customize the service to the level you need. These UI pieces can be injected into many spots, such as dashboard, markdown content, custom fields panel, and can even add a dedicated full screen page to your track. HTTP handlers allow apps to be accessible by UI widgets themselves and can act as a custom webhooks for integrations with third party systems. There are also such things as workflow rules, which can be triggered by described events and can automate daily operations in your track. And of course, all these pieces are provided with an API to securely access uh, the data stored in your track. Next, I would like to dive deep, uh, dive deep into apps internals. Here, we can see an overall simplified scheme of your track. We surely have a web application on the front end that communicates with the server via REST API. And there is in, in the backend, all the business logic happens, which ends up storing data in entities in the database. 
here apps come and things got a bit more complicated. Let's start with the front end. A sandbox appears here, where the app's widget UI is run. Technically, this is an iframe with a sandbox flag, which isolates code inside from the host. And we provide the sandbox with a limited set of APIs to communicate with the rest of the front end and with the back end. Now let's take a look at the back end. The sandbox also appears here, and it is a GraalVM engine that allows execution of JavaScript code in an isolated environment. The sandbox drives workflow rules and HTTP handlers, and they are provided with an API to access to the database. An app can have its own global storage in the database and can also attach data to existing entities, such as issue or article, in order to extend functionality around these entities. Of course, sandbox code can also make HTTP requests to third-party services and many more things. Let's get back to the app folder structure. By providing these files, you can set a recognizable logo for your app, you have to describe app details in the manifest. An app can declare its settings in settings JSON and can extend existing entities in entity, ex entity extensions JSON. An app can also have a HTTP handlers. And lastly, in the widgets folders, you will place the web app statics that will be making this custom user interface. I'd like to take a quick look uh, at what is stored in manifest.json. Firstly, some meta information very common to any manifest file out there, like name, description, version, vendor. And also the manifest declares the pieces of UI that the app injects. In this example, we declare a sample widget that should be shown in the first position in the custom fields panel. It has an icon and it declares that the user needs read user permission in order to see this widget. You can get more information about manifest JSON syntax in apps documentation. Now let's make an app. We've prepared a scaffolder, folder, so all you need to do is run this command and answer some questions. Uh, here I recorded how I create the conf app and I type in the answer to the questions it asked me. Uh, some information about the vendor. And then I create my first widget in this app. I type in the name and the key, and I select the extension point where this widget will appear. Then I skip some not required questions. And then I create a settings JSON for this app. And then, then I wait a bit while dependencies got installed. And that's it. The application is created. So our scope folder creates a track applications and follow best practices. And it can be run over the generated app again to add functionality later, such as widgets, new settings, extension properties, and HTTP handlers. And here is a brand new application. It uses Vita as a builder and uses TypeScript and React for building the UI. As you can see, it is pretty standard React component code, but it also utilizes the UTF object, which is our bridge to expose access to UTRAC into the widget. In this specific example, the widget makes an HTTP request to the backend slash debug endpoint, which is declared nearby in the backend JS file. It also uses the Ring UI components. Ring UI library is that library where I am a maintainer, which I told you about in the first slide. It's the open source library that we use to build UTRAC itself. Using the same library for the UTRAC and for the widget is crucial to allow custom UI to look like a part of your track, not a something borrowed. So once the app is generated, you can build and upload it to your, your track instance. If you don't have your track yet, you can get one in a few clicks 
Once you have it, you can create an OWASP token and in the Utrecht administration UA. And here, how it look, the app is being built, validated and uploaded. And then once you attach it to the project in administration UI, we can see it running. Here, if you click the big blue button, the app will make an HTTP request to that HTTP handler. Well, how simple it looks, but how many much of, how much layers of functionality behind. Uploading an app, uh, uploading an app archive directly to your instance is a nice way to solve your own case. But if you'd like to make your app available to others, of course, you can upload it to JetBrains Marketplace. All our own apps already uploaded, and we've already got some third-party authors sharing their work. It could be you. We try to keep this thing simple. So once you've developed your app and you're sure it works, you can upload it, and we will review it to be sure that app does what it described and doesn't violate marketplace rules. And then it goes live. It usually takes one or two days. And here I'd like to share some useful links. First, the link where you can get your own new track for sure. And the ring UI library, some repositories which contains our uh, apps, which are open sourced. And surely the documentation about the developing of future apps. Thank you, and of course, thank to the great Utrecht team behind the apps. And now, let's get back to the main stage.